Well, they say that third time is the charm, but I think it might have to be fourth because I've already planted this area over here three times now and three times we've had washouts. So today I'm not messing around anymore. We're doing the final time of seeding this thing. I have some seeding blanket left. It worked amazingly well over on the other side and one little test area over here as well. We're going to try to put the rest of that down. Hopefully I have enough to cover it and uh, that'll be it because as far as I can tell, that thing can withstand pretty much anything we can throw at it. The leveling stayed really nice during the storms. I don't really have any problems with that. It seems like after it gets rolled down, it pretty much stays in place. All right, so over here, this was the little seating blanket test that I did. I'm seeing germination over in here. It looks good. We're again at about, well, let's see, today is day seven. So this area over here, no blanket, same seed, nothing is growing there and you can see a little bit of tiny green in there and that's probably what did not get sprayed out but I'm not worried about a couple tiny little pieces of green for the majority of everything it'll be covered and we'll have a bunch of new grass growing in here hopefully in about another week's time of course I just put this away because I didn't think I was gonna need it but I was wrong about that So what's interesting about this soil after it gets so waterlogged is that, like I said, it's very intact. Now I can walk on it. I mean, of course it feels slightly, a little bit pliable, but for the most part, it's kind of one big piece now. An interesting thing that you can do now, you got our old trusty plastic rake with a handle, and uh, you can actually come through now, rake over the top of this, you'll see that it's not even digging in. And all of the debris and little rocks and any of the pieces of peat moss you know, sticks and stuff that were in there that will all come off. And you get a big pile like that, which we can just remove from there right now while we have a chance. I don't think I'm actually gonna tear into this soil because it's hard enough and level enough now that I really don't wanna change that. So I might do a little bit of different idea here, kind of uh, something I just thought of and we'll see if it works. You know, I may or may not need this little sticker on here. I don't know, maybe. Let's take that off. I've been going back and forth and back and forth on what I want to plant out there because it's kind of a kind of a main show area out in the front for everybody who drives by. So I decided that I've been having really good luck with the Mazama and the Blue Bank over on my other renovation so far and I haven't been able to really see too much of the Midnight because it's been a little bit slower. I think I'm just going to mix these two right here, just the Mazama and the Blue Bank. Mix those two together, see what it looks like. That way we'll have mono stands out on the north side of each one of these and then we will have a mix of these two and it'll just be kind of an, an interesting thing to look at. I know from my other measuring about how much needs to go into here and I'm going to use this cup thing again because I know that this cup full is about three and a half ounces and I need to get to ten ounces to put down three pounds per thousand on that area so I will put a little bit more than that in this little spreader. So I'll do two cups of this, two cups of this, we'll mix it around in there. I'll have a little bit left after that as well, but that's the plan. Shake this whole thing up, get it all mixed together. So really all I need now is something to put down to get a little bit of layer there for the seed to stick to. Then I'll put the blanket over top of that and once we get it watered in well, that should stick down and we won't have any problems. But I'm going to try a little bit of peat moss, just a super fine layer up on top here and then seed it, rake it in and we'll get the blanket over top of that and I think that should, should be good enough without trying to tear into that soil or rake into that soil at all. All right, so we're back to our fun with seeding, and I've got a, a little hand seeder. A few people have asked me why I'm not using a drop spreader, and the real simple answer to that is that I don't have one, and I don't really feel the need to buy one necessarily. Again, that's a need. Do I need one? Probably not. 
Do I need more spreaders in my shed? Probably not. Would I ever want to get one? Now that might be a different story. going to lightly rake that in. Like I said, I'm just trying to do this to basically have it touching a little bit more of a loose soil. And we're gonna rake that, roll it, and then we'll get to the seating blanket. This is the Futera Netless Blanket again. I did not find this for sale anywhere online, unfortunately, or I would love to be able to direct you somewhere, but found this locally at a landscape supply place. Sometimes they are available at site one from what I've heard, so you could check one of those in your area. Otherwise, you might have to ask around for somewhere uh, in your area that does some kind of landscape or soil erosion control type products. These are some biodegradable stakes that I got at Lowe's. So I'm just gonna start staking it here. From what I've noticed about it, it does tend to be pretty fragile. So you have to be kind of careful. You can't really start ripping it around too much or it will just tear, so. It is a little bit kind of a system that you have to deal with that way, but what I found otherwise is that it works really well once it's down. So two things I would probably not recommend doing. One would be doing this alone on a windy day. Not exactly a fun scenario. And two would be running out of stakes while it's also a windy day because now I've got things laying on here. I need to run to the store, get some more stakes to be able to stake the rest of this thing down and then water it in enough to get it to hopefully stick there. All right, we got more stakes. Put those out and now we are going to water it in and I'll show you also how many stakes I put in. So watering needs to be more like kind of like rainfall so simulating rainfall should be a little bit heavier. You'll see it kind of soak down the blanket and that's about when I kind of stop is when I just see it kind of completely soak down and kind of suck down to the ground. So on the edges here basically probably every three feet or so once it's watered in, like I said, it will stick down. And out there, I kind of just go, well, there's probably one every five feet, something like that. And then along the seam as well, I probably do every three feet. That just keeps it in place, and once it's watered, we should be good to go. 